Hello everyone, it's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your support. Today, I'm going to discuss on noise in a communication system. For this video, I'm going to distinguish what is the difference between signal to noise ratio and also noise ratio. The number one signal to noise ratio actually indicate whether we are able to receive the signal in a communication system. For example, the signal can be very strong and the noise is pretty small, decent noise. So in this environment, when we actually compare the signal to noise ratio, we are pretty sure that we are able to receive the signal. On the other hand, for example, we have a very strong signal. However, the noise is also pretty strong as compared to the signal. Hence, in this environment, for example, in a noisy class, even with the teacher screaming out, you probably have hard time to listen to the teacher voice, for example. Hence, in this environment, when we actually have a very strong signal and also strong noise, there is always a very high possibility that we are not able to retrieve back the original system in a communication system. Hence, signal to noise ratio is a very important parameter to study in a communication system. Next, we also study what is noise ratio. Noise ratio is simply indicate how much noise actually a stage actually add. Okay, for example, the signal to noise ratio only indicate the signal strength versus the noise. However, it does not indicate how much noise that is added in a circuit. Noise ratio is basically used to indicate how much a device or a circuit actually introduces the noise. Hence, this is the key difference between signal to noise ratio and noise ratio. Last but not least, we also have the noise figure. Noise figure is simply 10 log noise ratio which means that noise figure is simply a number that is in decibel as compared to noise ratio, which has a number in ratio. This will be the part two series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about noise in the communication system. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some comment how I actually can improve my delivery. Thank you so much. Let's quickly define what is signal to noise ratio. SNR is simply a relative measure of the ratio of the desired signal power S to the noise power N. Okay, so this is the equation to govern SNR. It's simply signal over noise in power. We have signal in power. We also have noise in power. The ratio S over N actually indicate what is SNR. In short, it's basically compare a signal strength versus the noise. So with this equation, we can know typically how noisy a signal is. For a good communication system, we desire that the SNR to be as high as possible. Okay, which means that over this equation here, it is always desired to have a very big SNR. Okay, let's take a look why. Okay, for example, we want our signal strength to be as big as possible. So we want the S to be as big as possible. We also want the noise to be as small as possible. Hence, when a very big number divided by a very small number, I actually have a very big SNR. So this is what it means, a good communication system we want the SNR to be as high as possible. If the SNR is very high, then we can distinguish the signal very easily from the noise. A low SNR will mean that the noise power is comparable to the signal power. 
and would mean that it is very noisy and difficult to obtain the signal. Since SNR is a very large number, it is often expressed in dB. Okay, so let's take a look over here. Let's do a quick conclusion here. So this is what it means. If I actually have a very small SNR, which means that the signal to noise is actually very close to each other. With this, I may have some issue to distinguish the signal. However, if I have a very big signal to noise ratio, which means that my signal strength is much, much bigger as compared to the noise, then I will not have any issue to distinguish the signal from the noise. These lines here mention that SNR is a very large number, hence it's very often that we express them in decibel. So this is the equation that described in decibel. This is in ratio. What I need to do is simply just 10 log whatever that is in ratio. And in decibel, for example here, okay, in ratio is a division I can express with a minus in decibel. So this is actually how we can rewrite the SNR in decibel format. Next, I'm going to show you clearly what, how does this signal to noise ratio look like. Okay, for example, when I talk through a microphone, and for example, for this case here, where there is no noise added to the original signal. So this is the original voice that I actually speak onto the microphone. You can see from here, there are no noise that added onto this original signal. So let's take two scenarios. Okay, for example, I have one microphone of noise and typically the signal strength is still relatively weak, which is 10 microvolt. Okay, this gives me a 20 dB SNR. So this is the original signal with the noise added here. So this is actually one scenario. Another scenario, I have the same amount of noise, which is one microvolt noise. Okay, now I actually has a higher so-called signal strength as compared to the other one. I have 20, 30 microvolt of signal strength. This work up to have 29 dB of SNR. So from here, you can see that my original signal almost look intact as compared to this with lots of noise that added onto the original signal. Okay, so let's, if the voice signal is weak, the noise will be a serious problem as the SNR will be low and we will have difficulties to retrieve back the original signal. Okay, so this is what I mean here. So for example, if I speak very softly onto the microphone, which result in this case here, and with the same amount of noise, this have a high possibility that you will not be able to hear me very clearly. However, if I shout onto the microphone, with a very strong signal, the original signal looks almost intact. And hence with this, I'm pretty sure that you will be able to hear me loud and clear. So basically this is what I meant by signal to noise ratio. Next, let's talk about signal ratio and, sorry, noise ratio and noise figure. SNR mainly compare between the signal power to the noise power. Okay, so this is what we have described on the previous few page. SNR is simply compare signal power versus the noise power. It does not, however, tell us how much noise is being added by the circuit itself. Okay, so this is what it means here. Okay, this signal to noise ratio basically indicate how strong the signal versus the noise. It does not indicate how much noise is added by this circuit. For example here, Noise ratio and noise figure are two parameters that are used to specify how noisy a circuit is. So this noise ratio and noise figure actually tell us how much noise that this circuit actually incurred. Okay, so this is what is noise ratio and noise figure. Okay, so noise ratio here is simply signal to noise ratio at the input over signal to noise ratio at the output. Can you see here? So this noise ratio basically indicate how much noise, additional noise that incurred by this original circuit. So in order to compute the noise, it's simply SNR at the input over the SNR at the output, okay, which is indicate here. Okay, remember this SNR 
is simply s divided by n for the input divided by s over n which is at the output here i'm going to rearrange the equation because this is the division i swap the position here n not become on top s not become below and basically i can rewrite the equation as shown over here next this SI over S0 is simply governed by this 1 over gain here. So gain is actually S out over S in. Okay, but since this is reverse, okay, I actually use this 1 over gain to govern this relationship here. So this is the equation. And then last but not least, how I actually can obtain my noise ratio. Okay, so this is N0. Okay, gain multiplied by my noise at the input here. So this is how I measure noise ratio. This noise ratio actually monitor how much additional noise that contribute by this original circuit here. As shown over here, so this is how much the noise contribute by this circuit. Noise ratio can be expressed in dB. When expressed in dB, it is known as noise figure. Okay, so this is what I mean. Whatever that you obtain from the previous equation, which is noise ratio, if I want to express them in noise figure, I just need to do a 10 log noise ratio. Okay, so this is what it means. The relationship between noise figure and noise ratio. The power of the noise of a circuit can also written as in dB here. So this is what I have done on the previous slides here. So I can do a cross multiply and not is equals to nr multiplied by g multiplied by the input noise as shown in this first line here. If I'm going to express them in dB, okay, the noise at the output in dBm, what I need is basically one of the term to be in dBm. So I express my noise in dBm, the rest must be in dB. So I have my noise ratio, which is noise figure in dB, Gain also, I need to convert them into dB. So this is another relationship that I can write for a noise power. Noise ratio compare the SNR at the input to the SNR at the output, which I have shown it to you earlier on. Okay, when both the SNR at the input and SNR at the output are expressed in dB, noise figure is simply given as this equation. Okay, so this is the equation here. Remember, noise ratio is simply SNR at the input over SNR at the output. So I actually can convert them into noise ratio, which is SNR at the input minus the SNR at the output. A noisy circuit will have additional noise introduced in itself and hence will result in degradation of the SNR at the output as compared to the SNR at the input. Okay, which means that if the circuit actually generate any additional noise, only the SNR at the output will be affected. However, the SNR at the input will not be affected by this additional noise that incurred by the circuit. So in short, SNR at the input is always bigger than SNR at the output. Okay, remember the noise I'm going to add onto this SNR at the output. This SNR at the input will not be changed even there is more and more noise that added to the circuit. A noiseless or ideal circuit is one that does not inject any additional noise in itself and hence there will not be any SNR degrade at the output. Okay, in an ideal situation where there is no noise, the SNR at the output will not be degraded okay, as compared to the SNR at the input. Okay, which means that the noise ratio for SNR at the input over the SNR at the output they are exactly the same when there is no noise that introduced. Hence, noise ratio will be equals to 1. And then if we do this noise figure, which means that 10 log 1, okay, which is 0 dB, so for this situation here, when noise figure is 0 dB or noise ratio, which is equal to 1, we have an ideal noiseless device, which means that the circuit do not introduce any further noise into the system. Hence, in this case here, again, you can rewrite the whole equation here. 
Okay, I can rewrite that the signal to noise ratio at the input is equal to signal to noise ratio at the output here. Let's take a look on this diagram to understand noise figure further. Okay, for example, at the input, okay, I have a signal strength. I have the noise also. So this is what we call a power of a signal, power of a noise. We use this SNR at the input to categorize the signal strength as compared to the noise. However, like what I mentioned, okay, this does not indicate how much noise this circuit actually contribute. So noise ratio actually is an indicative how much does this circuit actually introduce further noise to the output of the SNR. Okay, for example, for this case here, the signal go through the device, which is an amplifier, for example, the signal will gain the same gain from the amplifier and this result in a signal at the output. Next, when the noise actually pass through the amplifier, again, the noise will be able to obtain the gain from the amplifier and this is the resulting of noise at the output. Next, for this case here, let's assume that it is a noiseless device, which means that this device does not contribute any noise. Therefore, for this case here, the signal to noise ratio at the input is exactly the same as the signal to noise ratio at the output, which I have mentioned here. Remember, this is ideal and basically this circuit does not contribute any additional noise. Next, let's do into this a practical situation here where noise is added over in this circuit here. Again, there will be signal. The signal strength go through the amplifier. The signal will be amplified by a gain factor, okay, which is written over here. Next, as for noise, when the noise actually pass through this circuit, the noise will be amplified by the gain, which is shown over here. However, this stage also generate internal noise, which actually contribute to the noise at the output. So therefore, this NR, which indicate how much noise that is actually generated by this circuit, which is indicated over here. So this NR is basically additional noise that contribute by this circuit. And in this case, it's a realistic so-called uh, device where they actually generate noise. So hence, for this case here, signal to noise ratio at the output, which is not equal to the signal to noise ratio at the input. Normally, typically, signal to noise ratio at the input is much bigger as compared to signal to noise ratio at the output when the device is not ideal. So you can see from here, the device actually contribute additional noise which is governed by this noise ratio. And because of this, if you do this division here, you can realize that signal to noise ratio at the output actually reduce, which means that the number magnitude actually reduce, which governed by this equation here. With this, I'd like to stop my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.